And that's it, I'm starting. for my live demo on Fifi's Cake Support World through Facebook. My name's Anita from Anita's Cake Bakery and I've been baking and decorating celebration cakes for a number of years now and I've actually learned all my basics from my mum who was also a cake baker and decorator. My favourite things to make are toppers and I absolutely love making stiletto high-heeled shoes and sleeping babies. So tonight I'll be showing you how to make a sleeping baby cake topper, which is right here. Okay, let's get started. So basically it's just fondant icing that I'm going to use to make the base. Oh, actually, sorry. I'm gonna start by making the baby first. So this is the baby that we're going to make. So I'm going to use some flesh tone modeling paste. This is modeling paste, but you actually can use, um, <laughs> you can actually use fondant. And if you just add a bit of Tyler to it, it'll make it set a little bit harder and it'll be easier to work with. But I've got modeling paste here which I've colored the color that I like. So I'm just kneading it a little bit more. And so this is the mold that we're using. This is a silicone mold. I'm just going to dust it with some corn flour. Just to make sure it gets in all the grooves. Just so it's got a light covering inside, that should be fine. And we literally only need a little bit of the modeling paste. So I'm going to roll it into a bit of a sausage shape. And just push that in. You have to push it in quite firmly just to make sure that it gets into all of the grooves inside. So it's like literally just pushing your fingers in like that. And then just use a knife to scrape off the excess. So I've just smoothed it over with my finger like that and if you can all see this okay so I've just smoothed it over with my finger like that so what I usually do is I'll put it into the freezer for around five to ten minutes just to harden up a bit so that it's easier to pop out so I've got one that I've made earlier this one was in the freezer and it should be able to just pop right out there we go So that's how it should look. So what I'll just do is just put this aside to use later, and then I'll just put this modeling paste away. Sorry. Just put this modeling paste away so that it doesn't dry out. And then we'll go on to making the base. So this is the base. This is the next part that we're going to make now. So for that, I'm using some white modeling paste. Just kneading it to make sure it's soft and pliable. Just dust my surface a little bit more. Right, so. So I'm going to roll this out, which I might put just a little bit more because it needs to be 
enough to fit in this. This is the size that we're going to use for the cookie cutter, of cookie cutter that we need for the base actually. So I'm not going to roll it out too thinly, probably around three millimeters in thickness should be around the perfect thickness there. So we're looking at something like that. That's probably a bit more, that's about five millimeters actually. Right, so I've got my cookie cutter here and I'm going to use the scalloped edge side of the cookie cutter. So, just firmly push that down. Then you can just peel off the excess. I'll just put that away so it doesn't dry out. There you go. So now I'm going to use a diamond side um, quilter just to emboss some diamond detail into the base. So because this is quite a big base, I'm going to fill in the the gaps of the diamond that didn't quite catch with the knife. So I'm just going to use a knife for the areas of the quilt that didn't mark out the on the, onto the base. Because obviously the base is bigger than the quilter. Right, so that's done. So now what I've got is, um, it's really small actually, it's a really tiny, um, it's like an embosser I think. I don't know the technical name for it, I don't know if anyone else would know. If you know, you can pop it in the comments for me. But it's like a small embosser that is for the, like the corners of the quilting, as well, the corners of the diamonds I'd say. So I'm just going to emboss each corner like so. Don't know. So it's like a, it like imprints like a small, I'd say flower. Like a tiny flower imprint in each corner of the diamond. Probably wouldn't need to do all of it anyway because obviously the baby's going to be hiding some of it but anyway just so you know you've got a fair idea of what I've just done there it might be tricky to see it's quite tiny but yeah this is like the little quilter that I've just used so I'll put that away before I lose it because it's so small so now I've done the base the next step is to place the baby on top of the base. So I'm using um, the baby that I've made a few hours ago because it's a bit drier. So that's going to go on top of, of the base there. But before I place it on top of the base, I'm going to um, color the baby's hair. So I'm going to use some brown, if I can find it. I've got some chocolate brown um, edible tint here. And I've also got, I might mix in a bit of black if I can find it, just to make it like a dark brown. So I've got some black and I've got some brown. I'm just gonna mix the two together. I only need a, like literally just a tiny bit of this anyway, because it's just the baby's hair that we're coloring. So I'm just mixing the two together. We've got a bit too much there, but that's fine. 
So I've literally just mixed the two colours together so that I can do the hair. So I'm just going to get a paper towel, sorry. It's always, a, whoops, it's always a good idea to do any dusting on a paper towel, especially if you're if you've got white modeling paste around because obviously we don't want it to be ruined with some other colors but yeah so I'm gonna just dust the hair now you can see it's just literally just it doesn't have to be a thick coating of dust but just enough to make it look like the baby actually has hair although this is optional you can actually if you're making this yourself you can actually leave the baby bald without any hair or you know there's so many different options bald different colored hair anyway it's going to be covered with a small bow anyway slightly covered so there you go I don't know if you can see that but that's the hair all dusted. So now that's done, I'm going to place the baby. Just put some more. Just going to put some more corn flour on the side so it doesn't stick. Right, so I'm going to. Thanks. I'm going to place the baby onto the the base and you can use water or edible glue to stick the baby onto the base I've got some edible glue that I've made up so I'm going to use that so we just need to put some on the underneath of the baby just to help it stick all right and i'm like literally placing it in the middle of the base but towards the top end of the base so middle and top because the dress is actually going to come out quite wide so we need enough space for the dress to be able to hang off the edge off not hang off the edge but come to the edge of the base and flare out a bit okay so we've got the baby on the base we've got the base we've got the baby on and the next step we're going to do is we're going to make the dress for the baby so we need some more modeling paste not too much so this one we're going to roll out quite thin not too thick but not too thin so probably around two millimeters in thickness also see look my should have really washed my hands because now i've got some brown on here which probably be hidden anyway but right so so we're going to roll this out right so it needs to be big enough to cover the baby and go to the edge of the base so I'm going to cut maybe it's going to be a bit of a weird shape that I cut so that it fits <clears throat> so it's going to be like round at the bottom 
I mean, this bit's actually trial and error. You've just got to cut it to fit. There's no right or wrong way to do this actually, but just cut it so that it fits the baby. You can just keep trying it on, take it off until you get the right fit. I usually have to do it a few times until I get this right. But something like that. I don't know what kind of shape I'd say this is really. It's no particular shape. Right, so I'll try this on and see if it fits. If not, I'll just take it back off. So it's too big, obviously. So I need to take about that much off and a bit off the edges there. See, that's what I mean about trial and error. It's just, just cut to fit, really. <laughs> There's no special way to do this. If anyone has any questions or anything you'd like to ask me, just pop them in the comments box and I will respond, try and respond after the demo. I just need to cut a bit more off still. All right. Okay, so need to cut a bit more off there. Okay, so that's kind of, yeah, we've got, got there now. Yep, so that's the rough shape of what we're looking for. I think it's even a little bit too long, so I'm just going to take a bit more off and then, then I'll just stick it on. So I'm going to use some more edible glue to stick this on. So just brush your edible glue over the baby, over the baby's back. Bottom half, legs. And I will need to put some on the base, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. Need to wipe my hands because I've got some dust on my hands. Right, so so you just need to get into you just need to get into the creases of the baby's arm and like just push in the paste so it gets right in there and sticks firmly. So that's on nicely. So now what I'm going to do next is I want to do the ruffles. So we've got this part of the dress is ruffled. So I'm going to use my, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Right, so this part of the dress is ruffled under here. So I'm going to use my paintbrush to get underneath the dress to do the ruffles. 
but now I'm going to place some more edible glue on the base so that the ruffles stick, stick down nicely. So I'm just going to use my, just the end of the paintbrush. No technical skills to this, no technical equipment either. It's just the end of a paintbrush or the end of something that you can use just to do, see, just to do the, the ruffles of the skirt. It's just basically push it under. Can, you can pinch the the paste so that it ruffles up and stays in place. So push it up, pinch. There we go. So that's something like this is what we want to achieve. Oops. So, just need a bit more glue because I can see that it's, it's not really sticking on this side. Okay, so this is what we've got here. That's the ruffled dress. The hem part's ruffled, got the dress on nicely. Okay, I'm happy with this. So I think I'll go on to the next step now. Mm. Yep, I think that's okay. Right, so that's done. So the next step will be making so the baby's dress has this really tiny frilled sleeve here. So there and there's got a really tiny frilly sleeve. So I'm going to try and make that now to stick that on. So I'll need foam pad. So I'm going to roll some modeling paste. Actually, let's get that out of the way for a minute because basically I need to roll it and cut a tiny strip, two tiny strips. I only need a tiny bit here, so let's just roll that and cut two rectangles. Need a bit more um, corn flour. All right, so we've got two two small pieces. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to get my ball tool. So I've got my ball tool, ball tool, <laughs> and I'm going to frill one side of the rectangle that I've got here. Right, so that's basically two frilled pieces there. And then, don't know if you can see, but the, then I'm just going to uh, ruffle it like that. That's one sleeve. And then ruffle the other side. 
like that. Right, so I'm just going to cut a tiny piece off the end. This is, this is quite tricky to be honest. Um, if I don't get it right the first time, I'll just do it again. But oh, it's so tiny as well, a bit fiddly. So that's one sleeve and then this is the second sleeve. So I'm going to stick this on. So I'm just putting a tiny dab of the glue just on the baby's shoulder so that I can stick this on. I think I need to cut a bit more off actually. Right, so just trying to make the frill stand out a bit more but because it's so tiny and so fiddly. Right. Can be a bit tricky sometimes. So that's one sleeve, I think. That's okay. Okay, that's one sleeve. I'm going to put the next sleeve on now. On the other side. I'm really sorry if you guys can't all see this because it really is so tiny. Um, I think that should be all right. Okay, so I've put the two sleeves on now. So the next bit I'm going to make is like a small, we're going to do this part here. So it's like a, a belt or a sash that goes just in the middle part of the dress. So that is just a small piece of fondant or modeling paste that we need for this. Need to make sure it's the right length. It's a bit too thick, so I'm just going to roll it, roll it out a bit thinner. Oops. Right. So this is going to go. It's a bit too long actually, so cut some off. So we'll stick this on as well, just here. Right, so I'll stuck this on. And you just like, just tuck it in behind the baby's arm. Actually, I think it's a bit too high up. So I think it's a bit too high up. So I'm just gonna move it down slightly. We're going to decorate this part anyway with the, the edible pearls. Right, so that's on. I think that's okay. Oh, 
Right, so the next thing I'm going to do, sorry, I'm just pushing it up a bit. Right, so the next part I'm going to do is add the edible pearls, which are here. They're really tiny. Uh, sorry. Just gonna going to pour some into a little cup because they're so small, and I'm going to need a some tweezers to pick them up. So I'm going to just put some edible glue again over the sash or the belt, and then. And then I'm going to just pick these tiny balls up and stick them on. Oh, dropped one already. They're so, honestly, these are so tiny. Right, there's one. Two. Three. Oh, gonna need quite a few to fill this up actually. So if I've gone quiet, it's just this bit's a bit tedious. Where's everyone from anyway? Where are you all from? Drop the, drop it in the comments. Let me know. And I'm in Hertfordshire. Where are you, where are you all from? This is the part where I need Farzana. Are you one Farzana? You said. If I go quiet, you'd start telling some jokes. I think I need you. I think I need you at this point. While I'm doing this. Shireen Taylor says, wow, very small pieces. My hands are big. <laughs> My hands are big too, Shireen. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's really tricky, these tiny bits. Yeah, that's why you need tweezers. This cannot be done with your fingers. And trust me, I've tried. It doesn't work. Sorry, what were you going to say, Nigel? Um, Maggie Constable says, I'm learning and quite enjoying every minute of it. Oh, thank you, Maggie. That's good to hear. Hopefully you'll be able to make your own one after. I'd love to see if anyone makes them. You can send them to me so I can have a look. Okay, that's one row done. I'm thinking I should have done this sash a bit smaller, a bit thinner. So there's less beads to put on. I actually think I've done the, the demo one smaller because there's only two rows, but okay, let's try another one. Oopsie, dropped one. Actually, I think I need a bit more glue here. Right, so I'm going to put the second row of beads on now. I've put some more glue because I think it dried up the first lot of glue that I put on there because the balls were just falling off. So let's try this again. Oh, 
hope you can all see this okay. Jason C says, very detailed, we will definitely be trying this. Oh, thanks Jason. When you try, let me see what it looks like. I'd love to have a look at everyone's everyone's efforts. Oh. Nearly done everyone. <laughs> this is a bit tedious. But it's worth it because these beads really look cute once it's been put on. I'm just going to turn it around to do the last few. Oops. Right, so that's the second row done. It looks like it could do the third row, but what I'll do is I'll get on with the next step and if there's time at the end, I might add a third row of beads there. So let me just move all this off cuts here. Just put this out of the way. Right, so the next step is I'm going to do the detail on the dress. As you can see, this is a technique called Corneli Lace. Um, you use royal icing for this. So I've got my royal icing, which I've made up earlier. And I've put it in a piping bag and I've got a one Wilton number one piping nozzle here. Hold on a sec. Sorry, one. Right. Okay, so I'm basically, this, this technique is, is quite, it's quite easy actually. Um, it's just piping squiggles, literally squiggles all over the dress, but you just have to make sure that the squiggles do not overlap. So, so I'm going to start from here. I hope you can see this. So it's just literally just like lots of squiggly lines. Just make sure that you don't overlap these lines. I think this is quite an old technique because I remember when my mum used to bake, um, she used to do this technique on all the cakes. It must have been like the in thing back then. But yeah, I remember her doing this all the time. I actually remember helping her. So I think that's probably why I know how to do it so well. It was definitely on trend when I was young to have this design on your cake, wedding cakes, birthday cakes. Yeah. So this um, royal icing, obviously I made this earlier, but I made this icing um, using Merry White instead of actually using egg whites. Um, I just find it so much easier. I mean, what, what do your, you guys all do? Do you use actual egg whites to make your royal icing? Or, like me, do you use the powdered Merry White? Merry White's so much easier, honestly. But, um, 
and it still does a good job, still makes a good royal icing, which is what we need. So, yep, I'm just doing the squiggles. I don't know if you can see, but just doing the squiggles. I'm not overlapping them. And, yep, just doing this all over the baby's dress. I haven't really seen this technique on cakes um, nowadays. I don't know if it's really a thing. Maybe we need to bring this trend back in. Yeah, nearly there, just lots and lots of squiggly lines, no overlapping. Yeah. Deborah Edwards says, uh, I love watching people do fiddly detailed work. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. Yeah, this, if you're talking about those beads, <laughs> they were very, very fiddly, honestly. I don't really think I need to do another row. I mean, I could do another row of the beads, actually. I think I will. But yeah, I've, um, I've done all the lace on the baby's dress. So that's all done. Just, just a bit here, look. Cool. Yep, so I am going to do another row of beads because it looks like there's something missing here. So again, if I go a bit quiet, guys, it's just because I'm trying to concentrate on these beads not falling all over the place because they are so tiny. Right. So this is definitely the last row of beads, everyone. I promise. Oops. Already here in one drop. So fiddly, it almost makes, it's making my hand shake. Goodness. Right, there's a few more. Definitely not something you can do with your fingers, big fingers like mine. It's tricky. But, whoops, let me drop them there. Uh, Gronya, uh, I apologize if I butchered your name, but Gronya from Ireland oh. says, uh, says, I do need. I do need a pair of those tweezers. <laughs> honestly, I, I don't even know where I got these from. I've had them for years. Honestly, I don't know where I got them from. But I'm sure you can get them from cake decorating supplies. But yeah, definitely get one. <laughs> and it's nice to know that I've got people from Ireland tuning in. That is brilliant. Currently watching from uh, BT's Cake Support World 
Oh. Right? On Facebook. Excellent. Right. Ooh. No, I'll take that one off. Don't need that one actually. Right, that's all done. So this has got three rows of beads on this one. So let's put this out of the way before I drop those. So the next step is going to be um, making the bow for the baby's hair. So I've got my bow mold here. So here's my bow, bow mold. So I'm just going to dust this with some corn flour. And I'm going to put some of the modeling paste in there. Push that right in with your fingers and cut off the excess with a knife. Usually I put this in the freezer for a couple of seconds, or probably a minute or so, but it may well come out nicely. So let's give it a try. Just push the back. Oh yeah. Perfect. So this is going to go on the baby's head just above her ear. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back of the bow. And place this just on her head there. I've used the bow, but obviously you can use um, like a blossom cutter as well. I did have one to show you guys, but I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, here. So if you don't want to use a bow, you can use one of these. It's a blossom cutter. I'll just cut one out so you can see what that looks like, actually. So so this is a blossom cutter, I'll just push that in there. And then you've got this tiny blossom. So you could have put that on the baby's head as well. If I just show you on this one, it could have gone here instead of a bow, that's just as cute. And usually I'd put a, um, a small pearl inside as well. I haven't got one to show you here. Um, but yeah, I'd usually put like a small edible pearl in the middle of this, which is quite cute. So just to show you different options really. So you can use a bow, you can use a blossom, or you can just, just leave it plain really. You don't have to put anything in the baby's hair. Okay, right, so the next thing is, well, it's basically done. This is it. It's so easy to make this, this cake topper. Usually I would, I don't know, this, the royal icing is a bit wet, but usually once it's dried, I dust it with some luster dust. Um, I, I'd say it's a bit too wet to be brushing it right now. So an alternative to the luster dust, you can use some, um, like one of those pump, silver pump um, dusts, silver pump, uh, it's dust in a pump. So you just spray it basically. So I may well just do that over the baby's dress and everything. Just give it a knock so that it's all at the bottom then I'll just spray it does go everywhere. Actually, a good thing to do is to probably cover the baby's face a little bit so that it doesn't get too um, 
glittery on the baby's face and then you can just it gives it a really nice shimmery sparkly effect there you go that's that and then the last thing that I usually do is just to give the baby um, a little bit of colour on its cheek so I'd probably use for this skin tone because this is a dark skin tone um, I'd use maybe a peachy colour so I've got some peach dust here and you just need a, a small brush oops right so just a small dab it's literally just for the baby's cheek so you only need like the tiniest amount of dust for this you can you probably won't be able to see this on camera to be honest but it's like the smallest amount of dust on the baby's cheek and then there we go and that's it guys i think this baby's all done it's honestly so easy to make doesn't take long at all the only thing i would say is um when you make the baby to probably leave it to dry um maybe an hour or so before you start putting it on top of here and doing everything to it and also um I prefer the baby to be dry so that I can brush its head with the luster dust for the hair because otherwise it's, it's to me it's like just a bit too damp too wet to be dusting it with um the luster dust but yep yeah, here we go here's the baby all finished this one's actually got three rows of pearls instead of two There you go. There we go, everyone. I hope you like it. And I really hope you try to make this at home. And if you do, I would really, really love to see what you've come up with. Okay. So thanks for coming to my demo, everyone. I'm really happy to see all these all of you that's come on to um and especially fifi as well and your support group thank you so much for having me on tonight on facebook and i hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening take care bye